Hi, Quinn Miss here. Uh, the purpose of this video is to illustrate the four different types of nodes um, by my count. I mean, I don't think this is a scientific thing, but I count there are four unique types of nodes and the way they interact with each other. Uh, the purpose of the, the reason for the video is because of discussion that's ongoing about people who come to Freeplane and are frustrated by the interaction of the way nodes work within a map. And uh, rather than try to explain it in detail, it's much easier just to show people uh, at least what I'm trying to say. Others may want to respond to this video or, uh, you know, add their own ideas and insights. Freeplane is a complex program. It has capacities that are amazing, and especially the preview version, so-called preview versions. The officially released version of 1.0 and its uh, direct descendants, um, there's a world of difference between 1.0 and 1.2. Um, we now have capacities within uh, pre-released Freeplane uh, platform that are absolutely amazing in what they can do. And a lot of the changes that I'm going to talk about are only available in 1.2 and above. We're currently working out of 1.2.14 uh, sub 03. Uh, so if you haven't got that version and you're listening to this video, this may not make any sense to you. Uh, I don't personally see any reason why people wouldn't be using the preview versions of Freeplane available from the website. Um, they are very stable and I've never had a problem with loss of any data, but that's something you have to consider. Um, if you're going to be working in a preview version, things might change. Um, you, there may be glitches. I, again, I will say I haven't had any. That hasn't been my experience. Um, let me just start by saying that in this little map I've drawn here, there are four types of nodes by my count. Actually, there are many more. There are all kinds of nodes and node derivatives, but for for purposes of this, this map, I'm saying there are four main types. Uh, we can talk all day about the vagaries, the vagaries of how a node might be different, what makes it be a different kind of node, and I don't want to get into all that. Really, my purpose here is just to, to show how nodes interact within a map. These first two nodes that I've pre-droned here, I'm calling native nodes. These are the kind of nodes that are created when you create a node. These, they, they abide by certain rules within the program that are very useful and quite helpful, and when you think about it, very necessary. Um, I've preloaded these nodes with children and grandchildren. Uh, whenever you create a native node in Freeplane and then go to create children or descendants uh, underneath that node, the map changes, it moves visual elements around in the map to make room for the newcomers. Um, you notice what happens when I add when I add or subtract, the map is changing. The, the, there's a small difference in the relationships between the children and the grandchildren as these things are added. This is a good thing. Some people are frustrated by this, but imagine what would happen if this were not the case. As you created a grandchild, it would spill over into the children of another node. The, the visual space required to properly show this node would be overrun by the visual space required to properly show this node. So as a default, free plane in 1.2x and above, I think probably 1.0, this has always been this way, um, t makes a space for grandchildren and great-grandchildren, descendants, by, um, by rearranging elements on the map. Uh, now, some people find this frustrating because you, you, you start to move this child, for example, you notice the little oval handle. Every node has an oval handle on it and that's how you move that, that child. See, I can move that child within its space, but as I do so, the other elements are moving to accommodate it. And people find this frustrating. They say, I don't like that. Personally, I've gotten used to it. I like it that way because it keeps the space for all the elements clean. But for people who are frustrated by that, there has now been created something called a free position node. That's what I'm going to call it. A free position node demonstrated here has same rules that apply for children and grandchildren. But you see what happens. Because it's freely positioned, the program no longer applies the rules about visual space conservation and the free 
the free position node can easily overrun other elements of the map. And at this point there are still some glitchy behaviors on how um, the graphic stack is managed. So when you freely position a, a node, sometimes it shows up in the background, even though it's in focus, its children are not properly displayed on top of the others. Um, this is an element that still is a bug and will be fixed, but sometimes, um, depending on where we are, in this case they're all in the background, um, but when it's out here by itself, if you wanted to be able to move it away from everything else and not adjust the rest of the map, a freely positioned node works perfectly. Um, now, it has its limitations, as I pointed out, but it, one of them is you've got this, this connection back to the root node. This edge is still in place. There is something else called a floating and free-positioned node. A floating and pre-positioned node is the same thing as this one. It can be moved around the map without changing the relationship of other elements. And its edge is no longer visible. You know, the connection back to the root or its parent is no longer visible. That makes this a very unique kind of thing. It's very useful for creating titles and legends within your map. Suppose I was going to make this a title for everything in this stack. You see, it makes it very easy for me to create a, a space for it. But it does have limitations. See, when I begin to close down and move things, it doesn't move. So if I had a large, uh, high stack here, or I want to move something else up, I'm going to have to manually adjust it uh, in order to keep it visual appearance with everything else. So when I get these all closed down here, it may be that in my map it looks funny now sticking up there by itself, whereas before with everything opened it looked great. So freely positioned nodes are just that. They're freely positioned and they're floating. It requires you, not the program, to keep track of where they are and to move them around. Um, I personally find that annoying. Um, I would rather get my labels um, and appearance, visual appearance, using native nodes. But again, that's a personal preference. People who want to create a floating and free position node don't need to go through a lot of process to do that. They simply, in Windows, hold down a control key, double click. That creates a node that is automatically unattached from the root and is freely positionable. Some people prefer, when they're making maps, to do this quickly for purposes of capturing ideas in their maps. Um, it makes it easy for them to write down ideas and then they adjust them later. Personally, I prefer to capture ideas just by typing, typing them as they come in a stream of consciousness. And then using the little, the little uh, clicking on the note itself, I can rearrange them relative to their brothers and sisters. To even attach them, demote them to um, of the relationship of a, a sibling or a, um, a a descendant to another idea that I came up with. People who go this approach with the free positioned nodes then have to go back and undo those connections, which are handled through um, a combination of style. Over here, you notice the style is for a floating node. If I take that off and make it um, a level one node or maybe at default, you know, now its edge has reappeared and then I have to take its, I'm sorry, and then I have to take away its free positioned node capacity by unchecking this and now it is what I would call a native node. It's now back in the stack like its brothers and sisters. So if you go this approach and lay all these out here quickly, then you have to go back and manually reinsert them into the process. You know, stick them in where you want them in relation to their brothers and sisters. For me, that's just an extra step that I don't need to take, but those capabilities are available. For me, the best use of free-floating and free-positioned nodes is, as I said, for titles and legends within a map. Um, 
Okay, let me let me then make one other couple of points for people who are struggling with how to manage um, uh, how to manage nodes relative to brothers and sisters. There's a couple of practices that dawned on me I use um, using native nodes that might be useful to other people. First of all, focus on maintaining and building maps horizontally rather than vertically. And by that I mean this approach as opposed to this approach where you have lots of ideas all attached to the root and it makes it more vertical. It tends to get higher and higher and higher and it gets harder and harder to manage that map because the only way to see it is to drag the screen around or to change the zoom capabilities in the map making everything smaller. By making everything more horizontal collapsing ideas into clumps and then using either um, connectors to refer to other ideas or a special kind of node called a summary node which lets you sum up ideas and create additional children as you do it's easier for you to move around that kind of a map because see I can click out here collapse this idea but all the children and grandchildren remain in the elements they were before so it's easy to go back, collapse the map down to where I can see what I'm looking at at a simple visual level and then come back out here to detail anytime I wish. Um, that's personally. So focus on building and maintaining maps horizontally rather than vertically. And finally, collapse uh, unneeded branches to minimize visual clutter. It is rare that I have a map with all of its branches, twigs, leaves open. I have maps that tend to be very large and if I had them all open there would be no way I could I could absorb all that information so why do it? I make liberal use of as I showed you before the ability to collapse maps down collapse them down to the highest levels and then only open them up if you have reference needs to actually see what's there. I will point out at this there is a wonderful capability of find within uh, Freeplane that allows you to search through the entire map for keywords located either in detail or in node text, uh, children, whatever. You can find them very quickly. So I don't find there's a need to have the map visually open all the time. I tend to only open up uh, like in this case I wouldn't keep that out there I would keep the main ideas open because that's native to Freeplane but all the children and grandchildren any descendants close those when you're not using them and keep the map as compact visually as you possibly can those are my ideas if you have yours be f feel free to share them but I hope this helps in people trying to understand how the map works and where it where the various nodes are and how they interact with each other thanks I look forward to talking to you out on the forums